right? And so as we go more positive, we're now decreasing basically the energy of this. And so this one's going to go down and down and down until it's, say, here. And then you can transfer an electron over, right, uh, and fill that molecular orbital. So that's you know, the electron transferring from the elect analyte to the electrode, right? That's oxidation. Um, and so you know you might write A minus an electrode goes to yeah A plus, right? So it lost its electron. Uh, so what's left over here would be A plus. Uh, uh, um, all right, so that's molecular orbitals again, but I think part of the problem with people at just oral exams and that kind of thing in general is never have I been in an oral, an oral exam and somebody said, let's delete the molecular orbital. Can you draw me that diagram, right? They don't ask for things directly. They're like, you know, what's kind of happening with the energetics of reduction, uh, you know, of this oxidation reaction? And you're like, they don't have any time crap. I don't really know what they want. You know, so that's when you say, well, let me draw you the molecular orbitals. You know, I mean, they're not going to ask you to draw the molecular orbitals. It's never that straightforward. Right? It's always something coached in, you know, um, that kind of thing. Um, so, um, right, but you got to get to an energy where it's favorable to transfer those. Um, right, so, um, yeah, so if we were to do something like this, right, and we apply a potential sufficient, right, to do that. I'll call it an oxidation at the moment since I just said a positive sort of voltage. Um, right, then we will start to get a flow of electrons, right? And that's a current. So then we'll start to get a current um, if we do that. So the number of electrons that we get, right, in our current, the number of electrons that we get doing this kind of reaction. Um, is stoichiometrically related to the extent of chemical reaction. Right, so all that really means is stoichiometrically, meaning, you know, if you write out that balanced chemical equation, is, is going to be, re, re, you know, based on the coefficients, the stoichiometric coefficients, to how much of the reaction, you know, how much reaction have you done? You know, have I oxidized five molecules? Well, if I oxidized five molecules down here, right, I would make five molecules of that. I would have made, I would have gotten five electrons, right? If I oxidized ten, then I would have twice as much current, right? Twice as many electrons because I've oxidized twice as many molecules. I have seen people in situations, people who have no idea, you know, about what we do, and they say, is this electric chemistry stuff really quantitative? And people hem and haw, and like, well, kind of, no, no, that's not the answer. The answer is yes, yes, it's quantitative. The amount of current I get is stoichiometrically related to the amount of chemical reaction. That's true, that's quantitative. <laughs> no hem and haw, you know, I think people like, are, you know, hem and haw because they know all the problems with the technique and other things that can come into play. But the textbook says it is, so you can say that. It's okay. Uh, you know, I hate it when people hem and haw. It's like, okay, don't hem and haw. Say yes, then maybe explain why you know your particular situation is more difficult to do. Uh, but you know, the, the the law says yes, and so the law basically, right? Um, we'll get to Faraday's law um, a little bit later. But basically, uh, yeah, we'll do it. Faraday's law says that it is. Um, uh, quantitative. And so basically it says that you get the passage of uh, 96,485 coulombs of charge. So again, coulombs, one coulomb, if I can read my notes, I think it's 6.24 times 10 to the, I think it's 18 electrons. Don't, don't memorize that number off my notes. Uh, but so it's a fair amount of electrons. Uh, uh, so a coulomb is just a amount of electrons. So, but 996,485 coulombs to do one equivalent 
of a reaction, right? So that means to oxidize something with one electron, one mole, basically, that's, that's the amount of coulombs you need to oxidize or reduce one mole of something. Well, that 96,485 should hopefully look familiar. Um, again, if you know your constants, uh, right? That ends up being Faraday's constant. Again, he measured this, this is Michael Faraday. Uh, so that's Faraday's constant, right? And so he measured how many coulombs you needed to do one equivalent reaction. So when we start to get to more equations, you'll see a lot of them have an N and an S in them. That you know all comes from sort of Faraday's law and Faraday's uh, constant. Um, and so um, you know, we're, we're, so we'll get one mole either consumed or made with one electron. That's how much you do. So I don't want to hear you equivocate on electric chemistry being quantitative. It is, right? The amount of current you get depends on the amount of reaction you did. Uh, so it should be quantitative um, as far as that goes. Okay, so um, I'm going to switch gears just a second. It'll probably be better if I like, mark my notes by section of the textbook. So I'm like, okay, that's like a little bit of a shift. Um, but that's okay. They go through our long example that we're going to only kind of sort of go through. But it brings up a point. So I told you you can look up these E zeros in a textbook, like in a, um, you know, in a book. There will be a table. You'll be good. Um, that kind of thing. Uh, so we're going to make our favorite plot. Our favorite plot, right, in electric chemistry is I versus V. All right, so in electric chemistry, they really like to use E for voltage instead of V, just whatever, get used to it, it's fine, uh, potential um, kind of thing. So they show two plots in the textbook. One of them kind of looks like this. Remember, because this is the textbook, this is like plus 1.0 over here. I can't remember what this is over here. It's like something like minus 0.2. But it's the textbook, and they're going to be consistent, and everything negative is going to be on the right, right? And so our reduction, right, is going to happen there, and our oxidation, right? That's just, you know, they're going to show me a voltameram or something that looks like this. Again, you got to get your head around uh, what they're showing. Um, all right, so again, this is the cathode um, of what we're doing. All right, so at the cathode here, where they said they're going to get kind of this reaction, where H plus in solution um, is going to um, go to hydrogen. Um, and then at the other reaction, they actually, this is a bromine solution. No, I should have written that one. So, All right, that's electric chemical cell. So it's a platinum electrode and a solution of hydrogen bromide, uh, and then a silver silver bromide reference, basically, um, is what they're looking at. All right, so they got a bromine um, solution, and they're doing a bromine then oxidation. And the species they get, I think they give it to you, are either Br2 or Br3 minus. I don't much care about. Uh, Okay, so you look at that and you say, you know, I don't know that they measured this, but you know, the reduction of H plus takes place, you know, at a slightly negative potential. So that's this electrode. This is a platinum. Again, this is all a platinum electrode. Let me show you this plot. Again, um, and they say now. Did I write down? I didn't write down the um, thing. But now this is not a platinum electrode. This is a um, mercury electrode. And so at this side we have the oxidation of mercury. I'm not going to care about that. But at this side we have the same reaction. Um, uh, so we have the same reaction. 
But over here, it happened at like minus 0 0.2 volts. And over here, it happened at minus 1 volt. So, what's going on? Can anyone come up with kind of a physical explanation as to why the potential at, for the same reaction, but at two different electrodes, would happen at two? Let's think thermodynamics for a minute. Let's think back to those molecular orbitals. Anything happening there? Energy wise? So you have a larger infinity of the conversions? Or no, I guess not the right word there, but uh, um, larger distance, that uh, amount of energy it takes to get that up there, that electron to the next level. Yeah, I mean, theoretically, as you said, where that electron is residing may be different. Um, so that's a, that's a pretty good guess. The other problem, and something we haven't mentioned yet, although I think it's chapter three in the textbook, is kinetics. Of how fast can you get that, you know, of what can you overcome. So there's thermodynamics, which is kind of like the orbital, the potential which things can happen, and then there's um, kinetics. And both of those can be against you. So here's the big problem with like chemistry. There's lots of textbook charts, and they're practically useless. Um, because they don't really define for you what's going to happen in any given electrode. Uh, so you may have a given electrode and it doesn't do the reaction at the potential it's supposed to do the reaction at. Um, because um, of either a thermodynamic barrier, its electrons located in a different place, or a kinetic barrier. Um, and so, um, in this case I think it's more of a kinetic barrier. Um, and so, to get this reaction to happen, so in this case, to get the reduction of H plus to happen, right, we have to apply more voltage, right, it's in the negative direction, but we have to apply more negative voltage, right? I have to, remember, I'm going to show my molecular orbitals, like the energy going up. I've got to apply more energy to get this to happen. So if I have to apply more energy to get this to happen, um, that is called, um, this additional potential um, is called an over potential. That's given the symbol, that brief symbol in eta. Uh, so electric chemists talk about over potential a lot because the problem is, you know, the text, even the name of the textbook breaks down. The textbook says, potential and then it doesn't have that potential and it's almost always that you have to add additional energy you know, to get something to go um, and so we need to kind of um, look at that all right so um, I'll ask you one question and then we'll take a little break and then we'll go on to the next section what do you think about the rate of hydrogen reduction at our carbon electrons does it look more like this or does it look more like that Here's an application question. So, right, we, we do work in H plus, in solutions that have H plus, right? So this is a reaction we could do at our electrodes. So which one do you think it looks like? All right, we'll do a show of hands. They won't be on the video camera, don't worry. No, we won't have to get them off. All right, how many people think it looks, our carbon electrodes look more like a platinum electrode? You gotta vote. All right, how many people look, think it looks more like the mercury? Okay, we were about evenly split there. Okay, all right, well the answer is the mercury electrode. All right, well, does anyone want to explain why they chose that? I was hoping somebody would tell me they chose it because we never see it. Do we see this reaction very often? No, right, but do we scan to minus one very often? No, um, uh, and so this actually is a good thing for us. So you think of over potential as being bad, right? Over potential is bad, I have to apply more energy to get it to work. Well darn it, if you don't want the reaction to take place, like we really don't want to create hydrogen gas in the brain, you know, just between you and me, I don't think we want to do that. Um, you know, then it's a good thing that this is inhibited. So our carbon electrodes look a lot more like this. Quite frankly, the limiting, the limiting on our negative potential isn't usually um, oxidation, or sorry, isn't usually reduction of hydrogen, but it's reduction of oxygen. We don't like to go too low because we will start to reduce oxygen and that produces, again, free radicals and reactive oxygen species that we in general think of as bad things. 
So that's what the mean limits it. But again, I wanna, I'm want i trying to show you that you pick up this electric chemistry book and if you read it and it's so dry and you're like, I don't care about these two examples, but then I say, well, you know, it actually this has much application to our lives, right? Because we don't want to do this, and so we're, we're happy that at carbon electrodes, that basically we have a high, I mean, here's how we can write, we have a high over potential for H plus reduction. So as I said, that's what I'm trying to show you, that sometimes your life really is affected by the like, textbook, but they're not going to tell it to you. All right, we're going to take a five-minute break. We'll come back 